Hello and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have the book already, head over to www.cdschools.org slash blenderbasics to download a free copy. This video will focus on Chapter 5, Materials and Textures, Texturing the Landscape, and the Lighthouse that we created in an earlier exercise. So let's get started with this. Uh, right now I already have the, uh, light ha the landscape scene already open for us to work with. And if I were to um, hit F12 and render a picture, it doesn't look like a whole lot right now. Just a gray surface. So we're going to take this plane. And we're going to go into the materials panel, add a new material. And since this is going to represent our ground, we probably don't want our specular intensity very high because ground's not going to be very glossy. So I'll take it down to almost a, you know, less than a 0.1 level for now to see how things work. And there's really nothing else we're going to do with the material right now. We're going to head straight over to the texture panel, add a new texture, and it's already defaulted to image or movie. So let's go out and open a movie or open an image. Now what you're going to need to do is find a picture, maybe download a file, or even go out to um, the CD Schools website and download the texture library that we have available there. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually go to my texture library, and I have one here called Natural Surface Plants, and if I go to View by Thumbnails, uh, there's a nice one here that looks really good for this called Dirt Grass. It's actually a combination of dirt grass. It's going to look like a really nice natural surface. So I'm going to double click that and when I hit F12 and render a picture you'll see that it is on there and it actually looks kind of interesting. Not too bad but I think we can do a better job with this. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to change our coordinate mapping from UV to generate it. We'll hit F12 again render another picture and now it's looking a little bit more interesting, a little glossy, but we can fix that up here then. And I think the ne for next thing I really want to do with this is maybe change my image mapping size because this is a big plane and I'm going to take my image mapping up a bit. Let's try 8, see what 8 looks like. Um, looking much better. Okay, so this might work pretty good. Once I pull the camera back it might look more interesting. And the only other thing I'm going to do with this to make it look more realistic is go down to the influence panel under geometry, check the normal button, and hit F12 and render a picture. And all of a sudden that gives it some depth. It makes it look pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to take that normal down a little bit. Seems a little high for that. Um, but that gives me an interesting texture for things. So that looks pretty good. Okay, next thing we're going to do with this landscape, and I'm going to jump a little bit out of order the way that it is in the manual, is we're going to add the, the water to this scene a while. So I'm going to uh, hit spacebar, add mesh, I'm going to add a, another plane, scale it up, and there's a good example of what we talked about earlier, what we call Z fighting, when you have a face on top of another face. Looks a little funky if I'd F12 it and render it. You see how it's all merged together. It doesn't know what to render, which surface. So whenever you see something like that, you know you got to fix something up. We're going to pull that plane up a little bit higher with the arrow of our widget. So now when I hit F12 and render, it looks pretty good. Okay, and we're just going to let the plane go for right now. Uh, maybe we'll just add a color to it. We're going to eventually do some uh, more interesting things with this by putting on an ocean modifier. So I will put a material on it, and we'll just make it kind of a bluish color for right now. And maybe I will put a texture on it, just to make it a little more interesting. Uh, we're going to go with new. And instead of an image or movie, I'm, I'm going to uh, probably use a cloud texture on this. might be interesting to use a cloud texture. So if I hit the texture material or both, um, we've got the blue, but we're also getting a lot of that pinkish color. So let's scroll down we get to that color and I'm just going to make this maybe be a darker deeper blue. Almost kind of more of a gray. Okay we'll go back up under mapping under UV I'm going to change that back to generate it. And let's hit F12 and see what that looks like at this point. Alright so we're getting a little something there. Okay let's shake the size down a little bit smaller on the cloud. F12 Okay, that's looking a little more interesting. And you know, we always love to use that normal button under geometry, so let's hit that. And wow, look what that's making the water do. 
So we get a little ripple to it now. A little too much ripple. I'm going to take that normal down. Oh, we'll try 0.5 for now and see what that looks like. I do have numbers within the Blender Basics book that can help you figure out which ones you want to use for things. But what we wanted to do is also put an ocean simulator on this thing under modifiers. This is going to be really interesting. This is a pretty new modifier that was added not too many years ago. So I'm going to go to the wrench. I'm going to add a modifier. And right here is one called ocean. As soon as I do that, it gets really big. Okay, much bigger than we really want. Okay, so let's um let's take care of our scale on this thing a little bit. If you look, you got a lot of a lot of settings in here for the ocean simulator. I'm just going to start taking the scale down a little bit. You know, and I can even actually I'll keep that up at one, and I'll just scale the whole plane down with the S key. All right, so let's zoom in and see what we're looking at here. Scale. Okay, I'm going to pull that up a little bit higher, and with the scale, if I, um, let's try to go the opposite direction with the scale. That controls how much wave action you've got. So you have to decide how much of that scale you're going to want to work with. Okay, so we've got that in there. Um, and there are more things that we can do with that. And if you read the manual, it'll walk you through some of that to get a good choppiness with the waves. Okay, so that's some of the basics with the landscape. It looks pretty good. We're going to save that. And now I'm going to actually open up the lighthouse because we need to do some more texturing work on that. So I'll go to um, actually open recent. Let's go in here to the lighthouse itself. Now the problem we have with the lighthouse is right now it's all one connected object. And we need to put different textures on different areas of this thing. There are two ways to do this. The way that I have you run through this in the book is to actually separate the meshes um, and then there's another way to actually assign a material just onto an object. So I'm going to show both of those methods to you right now. First thing I'm going to do is go to wireframe because it's a lot easier to select all through things. And we're going to go into edit mode. Okay, I want to separate the roof from the rest of the lighthouse. So I already have that point selected. If the wrong thing is selected, like right there is the, the window, um, just hit A for all to deselect. And then make sure that everything is deselected. I'm going to hit B for box. I'm going to drag a window around the roof of the lighthouse. I want to separate the roof from the rest of the lighthouse. So the key to use for that is called the P key. You're going to hit P for partition. <coughs> and we're going to separate selected. Now if I went back to object mode, you'll see that the top of the lighthouse is now separate from the bottom. If I had G to grab, see I can move it off of there. Now we can separate the rest of the lighthouse. We can separate this part and then separate the middle. <coughs> the way the manual shows. I'm going to do something a little different with this one that we don't really have in the manual for right now. If I go over to materials, <clears throat> I can add multiple material channels in here. So we're going to put a main material on the lighthouse itself. And I'm just going to hit the plus. I have many different materials do I have? One, two, three different areas. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to um, add three different materials here. Add another material channel, new. Okay, so now what I can do with this is I'm going to name this top material, and this is where we're going to get into naming a little bit. I'm going to name this material base of the lighthouse. And I'm going to call this one walk for walkway. And we're going to call this one uh, window area, windows. Okay, so now I have three different materials. So with this lighthouse selected, if I were to go into edit mode right now with the tab key or change it down here, if I box select an area of vertices and say I want that walkway to be here. Now if you notice when I went into edit mode, I have three new buttons that weren't here before. What I can do is select that, pick walkway and hit assign. Now I just assigned that material to the walkway only. Now, in order to get the top window area, I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. If I try to select these vertices, I'm going to get some that I don't want. So I'm going to change this to face select, hit B to box, and just get all the faces going around the middle there. I'm going to hit windows and hit assign to that section. And I don't have to worry about the base because the rest of it is already assigned to the base. So let's go back over to solid view and go back to object mode. Now, 
we need to assign a material to the base. I'm going to put a texture on it, but for right now I'm just going to change the color so you can see what shows up. So there's the base material. If I hit the walkway area, I'm going to assign that kind of a blue. And if I pick the window area, I'm going to assign that kind of a red. Okay. So you can see now the different materials are assigned to the different parts of the lighthouse. I'm going to switch myself to the rendered view right now just to make this job go a little easier for me. And I'm going to switch this top viewport to a 3D view window so I can kind of see what's going on and make it easier to select. I always hate trying to select things when you're textured because you have no idea what you're selection, selecting unless you look down here. So the top of the lighthouse, let's do that part first. Let's add a new material to that. We have not put a material on this yet. Okay, I'm not going to really mess with the material. I'm going to go straight to textures, add a new texture, and it's already defaulted to image or movie. I'm going to open an image for it, and I'm going to go back to my, my uh, texture maps folder, and I think I have something in the metal tech folder that might look pretty good for this. I technically like this, this chrome cement panels here. Kind of looks like something that would work for a roof. Now, if I select it by default, it's going to try to map it, but it's not going to look quite right. Okay, because it's being try trying to map it as a UV, let's change it back to generate it. Okay, and it's still not quite right. Instead of a flat projection, what do you say we try to do like a um, dry tube? See what a tube looks like. And it's still kind of weird, so let's do the repeat a couple of times and see what happens here. So generate a tube. Oh, yeah, for some reason it's acting like I didn't even pick the picture. Open the image. There we go. Now I put it on there. So now you have a nice looking texture on that surface. And we can repeat it a few more times. We could even put a normal on it underneath the texture settings. Okay, gives a little depth. Okay, so let's go back to the main lighthouse now. So I'm going to start with the base. Go over to textures. Scroll back up to the top. Add a new texture. Image or movie. And let's go open a picture for this one. And I'm going to go into my um, brick, stone, concrete view as thumbnails. So let's see, what would be a good one for the base of this lighthouse? You know, any of these stone type textures would probably look really good for that. Let's just try that one. Okay, and it put it on, but it's all stretched out and looking weird. So, I'm going to go down here, and again, we got this UV problem. Let's change that back to generate it. And I'm going to change the projection type from flat to tube. And they should start going around there a little bit better. And let's increase the X and Y size on these. Oops. Trying to do a rendered view is a little uncooperative right now. So there you go. We got some bricks on there. And I have kind of a dark side right now for things. Spin that around a little bit better. Okay, so there you go. You can see we've put some bricks on the lighthouse now. Walkway can be just a material. Um, go back to my textures, pick the walkway. And maybe I would want some kind of a gray for that. So I'll change my color back here to some kind of neutral gray. Maybe try to make it look like concrete. Again, you can add whatever textures you want to to that. Go back to my top here and pick the window area and we'll just say maybe they're painted a nice red color and there you go so you've got some texturing now on your lighthouse and some texturing on your ground there is one thing that we need to do to um, improve this lighthouse a little bit more is cut some holes for windows in this so I'm gonna go back here to a wireframe view and a number one a front view we're going to go into edit mode 
And we're already into face select up here. Uh, let's make this into solid, might be a little easier. What I want to do is I want to delete every three panels. So if I hold down my shift key while I select, and I'm just using my mouse wheel to rotate, I'm selecting every three faces, leaving one. Mathematically, this should work out going all the way around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these faces that I'm selecting. And all it's going to leave is a little bar between them. So I've selected all the faces I want to delete. I hit the delete key and I want to do faces this time instead of vertices. We'll go back to object mode. We'll go back to a rendered view. And there you go. So both the lighthouse and the landscape are now material and textured. Thanks for watching.